Hello, I'm Dr. Walters, and I would like to welcome you to this brief vodcast on defining globalization. During week two, we will be reading Manfred Steger's short and quite general book on globalization. Steger addresses a vast array of topics, sometimes in a somewhat superficial way, but he does provide an amazing, quick, and general overview of the many features and faces of globalization. There are many definitions of globalization. Among my favorites is that by Anthony Giddens, Oxford Don, and world-renowned sociologist. Globalization can thus be defined as the intensification of worldwide social relations, which link distant localities in such a way that local happenings are shaped by events occurring many miles away and vice versa. Uh, another sociologist, Roland Robertson, globalization as a concept refers both to the compression of the world and to the intensification of consciousness of the world as a whole. David Held, Globalization may be thought of as a process which embodies a transformation in the spatial organization of social relations and transactions, generating transcontinental or interregional flows and networks of activities, interactions, and the exercise of power. There are a number of qualities at the core of globalization identified by Steger involves, globalization involves the creation of new networks and the multiplication of existing connections that cut across traditional boundaries. It is reflected in the stretching of social relations, activities, and connections. It involves the intensification and acceleration of social exchanges and activities and occurs on a material plane, but also at the level of human consciousness. One might take exception to the way in which Steger has developed his periods. Nonetheless, he identifies five, the prehistoric, pre-modern, the early modern, the modern, and the contemporary. He then takes a quick overview or develops a quick overview in four chapters on four dimensions, the economic dimension, the political dimension, the cultural dimension, and the ecological dimension. The economic dimension is identified by gigantic flows of capital mediated by uh, digital technology which have stimulated trade. Markets have migrated to cyber state space and extended, vastly extended their reach. Huge transnational corporations, powerful international economic institutions such as the IMF, and giant regional trading systems such as the European Union have emerged as key building blocks. In the political dimension, the dimension is largely defined by the conflict contradiction between the nation state and the global world the nation-state emerged in the 17th century and set up uh, modern political institutions with defined uh, territories and jurisdiction. Has globalization weakened the power of the nation-state and returned us to a borderless world? What is the impact of multinational agreements, treatises, and organizations? Is real global governance possible? These shape key questions in the political dimension. In the cultural dimension, does globalization mean homogenization, such as McDonaldization? What is the impact of media and digital communication? What happens to local cultures? And finally, what do the UNESCO cultural heritage sites tell us about the globalization process? The ecological dimension, in a sense, overlaps with the cultural and the political and even the economic dimension. We face global climate change, the potential exhaustion of natural resources, pollution, and the idea of equity and parity and sustainable development, especially as we assess the impact on the environment, on pollution, on climate change, on natural resources of the emerging or newly industrializing 
countries or nations. At least four isms pervade current discussions of globalization, market globalism, or the idea of free markets and neoliberalism, justice globalism with its egalitarian ideals, again, a, a subject fraught with uh, difficulty and challenges, especially given the limitations on the capacity of international governance organizations to establish a consensus about jurisdiction, religious globalisms, and here I think I might take the most exception to some of uh, the claims by Steger, and secularism and secular ideologies. Finally, globalization is happening. It's easy to say that we need to get in front and steer the process, but then who really has the legitimate authority to do so? Who's really in charge? These transformative social processes must have a moral compass and ethical pole star guiding collective efforts. The building of a truly democratic and egalitarian global order that protects universal human rights without destroying the cultural diversity that is the lifeblood of human evolution. So I very much look forward to our discussion this week and uh, wish you much success in your reading and assignments.